All right, we're recording. Hello, third period, Algebra 2. Welcome to Corpy's World. Please like. You don't have to like. Just subscribe. You don't have to like it. I don't, yeah, hit the red button down below. Subscribe. And you get an alert every time a new one comes up. Okay, thank you. Uh, so we're starting 6.4 today. Matrix equations. Okay, so if you were here last time, we, we, we solved a 3x3. Three three. We, we call it a 3x3. Three three. It was three equations with three unknowns. We did it by hand. And then prior to that, we were solving two by twos, linear quadratics or linear linears. There's a way to solve these on the calculator, which makes it a heck of a lot easier, okay? Matrices are basically a way to organize information. That's all a matrix is. It's a combination of rows and columns that arranges information into a coherent way that we can then uh, perform algebra on. In other words, we can get a computer to do the work for us because it's programmable. We break it down into enough tasks that we can fundamentally tell a computer how to do it and what to do every single time. It's called matrix operations. You ready to try it out? All right. What we're gonna do is we're gonna create two matrices, okay? A matrix, C, a matrix let's, let's do this first. Matrix is singular, singular, and then matrices, this is plural. Okay, so we're going to create two matrices, a coefficient matrix, and we're going to create a constant matrix. And the variable matrix will take care of itself. So here's what we're going to do. Let's just try this out. Write the system as a matrix equation and then use the matrix on the calculator. Okay, so what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and get to write our information like this. We're going to be solving linears, by the way. These are linear equations, x to the first and y to the first. We want to get them in this form, ax plus by equals c. That's our target form, our target form. We have the variables on the left, and we have our constant on the right. This would be the same form that we would be working towards if we were doing the elimination method, if you recall. So in the, in the, in the first one, I'm going to have 3x minus 3y equals negative 6. Bring the, bring the 6 across and it becomes negative 6. In the second one, I have the 2x already on the left. I need to bring the y across, so it becomes minus y, and it equals 3. Okay? So we're just shuffling terms around. That's all we're doing. Once you get it written like this, I'm going to put a 1 in front of the x. Okay? If you ever have a single variable without a number in front, go ahead and put a 1 in front. It'll help it out. I know, it's kind of boring. All right, let's go ahead and, and, and create what's going to be called our coefficient matrix. The coefficients, remember, are the numbers in front of the variables. So I'm going to have a 1, a negative 3, a 2, and I'm put a 1 there again, a negative 1. Now, the way that we draw a matrix is we put, like, bra brackets around it. Okay? This is called your coefficient matrix. What's going to happen then next to there is you're going to get your variable matrix, X, Y. We call that a two by one. Okay. This is a two by two matrix. This is a two by one matrix. We, we list it by row and column. Row and column. That's how, we, that's how we classify matrices, by how many rows and columns they have. So my coefficient matrix had two rows and two columns. My variable matrix has two rows and one column. That's going to equal another two by one, which is negative six and three. So we have our variable matrix, bless you, and then we have our constant matrix. Can you see the parallel in the organization? It looks very, very similar to my AX plus BY equals C, doesn't it? I'm just getting rid of the X's and Y's and creating my coefficient matrix. And then I'm putting my variables X, Y vertically. And then I'm just putting brackets essentially around the, the right-hand side. So does everyone see how I set that up? And you think you could do the same with different numbers? Okay, now here's the beauty of it. We're going to type this into the calculator. We're going to call this A. We're going to call the variable matrix X. And we're going to call the constant matrix B. So we have A times X times B. Now, what would you have to do to solve for X? You would say divide by A, wouldn't you? We would divide by A. 
but we can't really divide matrices. So what we do is we say we're going to apply the inverse of A. So I'm going to have A inverse times AX equals A inverse times B. Okay, now here's why this works. Look what happens. What do you think A inverse times A is? What do you think any number times its inverse is? Like five times a fifth, four times a fourth, two thirds times three halves. You get one. You get what's called the identity matrix. You don't have to know what that is. Just know that A inverse times A, they undo each other, and I'm left with X equals. And on the right hand side, we have A inverse B. And that's going to give us our solution. Okay? So here's as simple as what we're going to do. We're going to set up our matrices, and then we're going to go to the calculator, and we're just going to type in A. We're really only creating two of them. We're going to type in A, and we're going to type in B. You got it? The X, Y takes care of itself. So here's how we go to the matrices. Where is your matrix found? Does anyone see matrix on your calculator? Go down the left-hand side. It's the X inverse button. See that? But it's not the X inverse. It's the second feature. So hit second X to the negative first down the left-hand side. And then you get into this little matrix um, menu. You have names in the first column. If you click to the right, you have math. And if you click to the right again, you have edit. Okay? We want to edit letter A. So click to the right, and we have edit A, hit enter. It's going to ask you for the size of the matrix that you're trying to enter. What did we say our coefficient matrix size was? It's a two by two. It's a two row and two column. So hit two, enter, two, enter. And then look what happens down below. It actually gives you two rows and two columns. And you just type in the numbers in the right place. Hit one, enter, and it highlights the next one. We're in the second column now, first row. Negative three, enter. Now it takes you to the second row, first column. Two, enter and negative one, enter. And all you gotta do before you get out of there is double check and make sure you typed it in correctly. All a matrix is, is just rows and columns. Does that look good? Okay, now we wanna edit B. So now go back to your matrix button, second matrix. Go over to edit, and notice the two by two showed up. See how it says two by two next to A? I wanna go to edit first, and then I scroll down to B. I wanna edit B now, okay, boom. So now what is the size of B? Two rows and one column, RC cola. It's a two by one. And you can see how it looks down below. So I'm going to type in a negative six, and I'm going to type in a three, and it looks good, doesn't it? Now, again, if you go back to your matrix command, you see now in A it has a two by two, and in B it has a two by one. What I want to do now is let the calculator do the math for me. I'm not going to teach you how to do matrix multiplication by hand, but it can be done by hand, but it's not that fun. Your calculator will do it for you. All you have to do is go to the home screen now. Second mode, that quits, remember. Second mode quits. And all we got to do is type in this. You type in A inverse B. Here's how we get A. Go back to your matrix. This time we want the name A. So we want the name A, so just hit enter. And when you do that, matrix A appears on the home screen. And then we want to take the inverse of it, which is the matrix button itself without going to the matrix. It's just the X to the negative first button. So you hit X to the negative first. And then you recall matrix B. So second matrix, go down to the name of B and hit enter. You should see this on your home screen, A inverse B. Anyone need help with how to get it? Matrix A. Inverse button, matrix B, hit enter. Look what happens. You're going to get out a solution. What is our variable matrix? Our variable matrix was X, Y, and it gives us 3 and 3. Guess what X must be? 3. three. Guess what Y must be? 3. The first row is your X, the second row is your Y. So the solution, as an ordered pair, must be the point 3, comma 3.
Now that seemed like a lot of keystrokes and a lot to do because it was your first one that you've seen in the whole wide world. But let's review what we actually did. We wrote it in matrix form or illumination form, AX plus BY equals C. And then we wrote out, you don't even have to write this out. You don't even have to write this out. Once you get it in this form right here, I will allow you to go straight to the calculator because you can kind of see the rows and the columns, can't you? You can see the information that you need. So you go to matrix, which is second X inverse. You go to edit number one, you type in a two by two and you type in your data. Then you go back to matrix, second, ma sec second matrix, second X inverse. You're gonna edit B as a two by one. You type it in there. And once you have it in as a two by one, you go to your home screen, second quit. And then you just type in A inverse B. A inverse, that's gonna be matrix again. We, we do a lot of, we hit a lot of that X to the inverse button. So second X inverse and then name A, the inverse button, and then second inverse button, name B, and boom, we hit enter. And it gives us the X and Y. Your calculator is doing matrix multiplication, which if you go on to take college algebra, you'll learn how to do matrix multiplication by hand. I'm not gonna teach that to you, okay? But I'll let the calculator do the work for us. You okay with that? All right. Um, now, if it works with a two by two, it should work equally nice with a three by three. You remember how fun it was to do the three by threes on Thursday? It was, we had to do a double elimination, then we had to do elimination on those, and then we had to climb the ladder back up. Look how easy it is here. Step one, get them into uh, elimination form. AX plus BY plus CZ now equals D. We're gonna have three, it's a three by three. So there is a little bit of term shuffling going on. All right, so we got 6x minus y plus 3z equals negative 9. And I'm going to put a negative 1 instead of just negative y. Everyone see that? That's the first equation. 6x minus y plus 3z equals negative 9. Second equation, 5x plus 5y. Bring the 5z across. It becomes minus 5z equals 20. And then the bottom equation, 3x minus y plus 4z, bring the 5 across, and it becomes negative 5. Once you have it written in variables on the left, numbers on the right, you can go ahead and set up your equation. So let's go ahead and say um, second matrix. We'll go back to edit. Second matrix or second x inverse. We'll edit the first one again. Now. Instead of a two by two, we're going to call it a what? It's going to have three rows and three columns. So it's a three by three. Now, the old numbers from before are in there. We could just type over them. So let's go across the first row. The coefficient is six, enter, negative one, enter, and three, enter. You got it? That's your x, y, z coefficient for the first equation. Now, the second equation, five, five, negative five. Those are your next coefficients. And then three. What's the next number? Negative one and four, boom. You make sure you have them all listed in there very carefully from your paper to your calculator because if the numbers are wrong, your calculator is going to give you the wrong answer. If you don't have them written in the X, Y, Z equals a number format, it's not going to work. All right, now I want to type in the constant. The constant is going to be a what size, do you think? Look right here. How many rows do I have? Three rows and one column. So hit second X inverse. Go over to edit. Go down to B. Hit enter. And let's change the size. It's not a two by one anymore. It's a three by one. Hit enter. And we'll just type over the old numbers. Negative nine. Enter 20. Enter negative five. Enter. Look good? Okay. Now we go to the home screen. And I type in A inverse V. Hey, you know what? You could type in A inverse B again if you want, but look what you could do. If you just scroll back up with your directional pad, highlight what you typed in before, hit enter, it'll bring it back down, and guess what all you have to do? You hit enter again. It'll recalculate what A inverse B is, and you get negative 161. Let's just go ahead and go right to the solution. So the solution is as an ordered triplet, negative one, comma six, comma one. 
and that's it. It's just data entry, right? That's all it is. That's the beauty of matrices. You can organize your information, and then you can teach a calculator or a computer program how to fundamentally go about doing matrix multiplication, which I haven't shown you how to do it by hand, but the calculator handles the calculations very, very easily. And you get your, you get your XYZ solution. That's all you have to show. On a test or a quiz, I'll expect to see it in the format that we have written, and then the answer. That's it. I'm not going to make you write the matrices out. I'm not going to have you take a screenshot of your calculator and put it on your, your homework. I'll just assume if you get the right answer, you've gone through the right keystrokes. Okay? Now, the next question. What number would be used in the matrix if there was a variable missing in one of the equations? Let's say you had an equation and it just had X and a Z and there was no Y. What, what coefficient would you use for, as a placeholder for the Y? Like if you had 3X plus 4Z equals negative 5. You would have to write it in XYZ format. It would be 3X plus 4Z equals negative 5. And what would you have to have here as a placeholder plus what Y? Not 1Y because 1 would make it manifest. 0. What's zero times anything? Zero. So that, that's if it's gone, it's because the coefficient is zero. So you do have to be careful. Matrices organize information, but you have to organize the format before it can do the work for you. So make sure you have a placeholder for a zero. Um, linear quadratic systems cannot be solved using a matrix equation. Okay, unfortunately. They're only good for linear systems or quadratic, if they're all quadratic, so they're all linear. Okay, it doesn't work for um, linear quadratics. Any questions on that? You want to go back and rework the one from the other day? Let's go back and rework the one from the other day. Go back to your 6.3 notes. And let's take a look at this one that we did uh, on Thursday. We got the solution to be 2, negative 1, 3. Let's go ahead and try it back out. Um, using the matrix multiplication. This will give you a chance to type in another one. So if we come back, notice it's already an XYZ number, XYZ number, XYZ number format. So let's just go modify our, our matrices. Hit second X inverse. We'll edit the first one. It's still a three by three, but going straight across, we have a one X, enter a two Y, a three. The next one is a one X, a three Y, and a two Z. And the next one is a one X a 4y, and a negative 1z. So I just modified my 3 by 3. Now I'm going to go back to second matrix, edit. I'm going to edit letter B now. It's still a 3 by 1, but now it's positive 9, positive 5, negative 5. Enter. And now I go back to the home screen, second mode. And look, I can either type in A inverse B again if I want, or since it's still up there, I can grab it. Bring it back down and hit enter, and it'll recalculate it with the new matrices that I put in. And is, is that the answer we got on Thursday? Two, negative, one, three? Well, holy moly, smokers. I don't have to ask you which way is easier, right? Yeah, I think that, that that's a silly question. All right, so here's the thing. On your test, you will not have to do a three by three by hand. That's why I only showed you one of them on Thursday by hand. You're not going to have to do a three by three by hand. You will have to do a three by three using the calculator, though, like we just did, which is pretty easy as long as you know how to organize the information. Okay, uh, let's go back to the 6.4 notes and let's review one last thing here. It says you cannot solve a quadratic system with a linear system by matrices. You have to solve it by hand. So let's go. Um, let's go 